Hi there, my friends. In this video, I'm going to show how to set up a third person controller using visual scripting, and I'll be using Cinemachine Package and Spock. The character that I'm going to use in is one of Kenny Asset's mini dungeon. So this character right there, if you want to follow along using exactly that character, you can download it there. But you can also follow along with using your character. So first, let's add the character to our scene. And I'm going to add a 3D object plane for my ground. I'll switch it to a stone color, but you can use any material you want on your floor. And now let's add a Cinemachine camera. So for that, you will need to import the package and you can go to Unity Register, look for a Cinemachine. And here I have it. And you should be able to see import here. If it's not, if you see remove, that means you already have Cinemachine in your project. Now, once you have Cinemachine in your project, if you're using Unity 2021 and above, the way you add the Cinemachine is by right clicking here and going in the drop down for Cinemachine. For a third person controller, I'm going to be using a free look camera. Now, if you're using an older Unity version, so anything below 2020, then the Cinemachine option will be at the top right here. Now, as soon as I add the Cinemachine here, I'm not seeing my character and the main camera is now being controlled by this free look camera. So currently we have options for follow and look at set to none. That is why it's just looking at a zero point, I guess. So if we want to add the character to be the follow point and then we'll also add character as a look point. Now there is a slight problem if we use character as a follow and look and you might notice it if we click play. So just by adding that Cinemachine camera you can see that we can move the character around. But when we move down and get closer to the character you can see that it's focusing on the character's feet and we want to actually probably focus on his face instead. And the same thing is going to happen with the follow. So to fix that, let's go inside our character and inside here, let's add an empty object. So create empty and let's call this aim point or something like that. So in the scene view, now we can see where that aim point is. And by default, it's going to go at the origin of the character human, which is down on his feet. So let's lift it up, focus on his head. And now let's use that aim point for the follow and the look at point. To check how it looks without playing the game, we can actually go into the game mode. And here we can switch between the top rig, middle rig and bottom rig. So those are the orbits that you can see around the player. And that's how the camera's gonna move around if we're gonna move the mouse up and down. So this is the lowest point, this is the midpoint, and this is the highest point. Now you can configure this however you would like, but how I like to configure is by using the height for the middle to be zero. So it's gonna be at the level of our character. And then for the bottom rig, I'm going to actually use a negative value. So we can use like negative four. So it can be symmetrical from top and bottom. And for the radius on the bottom, we can leave it as default. Now you can see that I'm actually going through the plane if I select a negative value to make sure that the camera doesn't go through the floor. You can go to add extensions and in here we can add a Cinemachine Collider on it. As soon as we do that, that will stop the camera from going past the ground. Now it looks like I'm a bit too close to the character. So let's increase the minimum radius. So something like this. So it would be really close to the character. But at this point, you probably want to make your character transparent as well. But I won't be doing that in this video. So now if we click play and see how the character is behaving. So this is our top point. And as soon as we go to the bottom, then it's just getting closer to the character. And then eventually we're just looking up. You can change those settings on the radius how you want and the height for the size of the character you have. I'll keep it like this for this tutorial. So let's go and configure a character for us to be able to move 
him around. So first let's add a collider and I'll use a capsule collider for the character and configure it to match how the character is looking here. So for radius, I uh, will use 0.2 and then for height, I'll use 0.7 and then the midpoint is 0.35. So this is going to be the collider of my character. Now I'm going to use a rigid body to move the character around and for constraints, I'm going to freeze rotation on X, Y and Z. Now before we add the script, let's add animation for the character. So the only two animations I'm going to do is idle and walk. So let's create an animator here and we'll create a new animator controller. So I'll call it character animator, open it up. And this character actually comes with the animations that we can use. I'm going to start by importing the idle animation and that is going to make it as the default animation that is going to get played and then also import the walk animation. Now for transition, I can use a parameter. So I'm going to go into parameters, add a float and the parameter name is going to be move. So this value is going to go from zero to one based on the speed that we're going to be moving. And we can use that to transition from idle state to walk state. So we can select the transition, turn off has exit time and maybe set a transition duration of 0.1 second. And now for the condition here, I'm going to transition if it is greater than 0.01. And now let's make a transition back from walk state to idle state um, and configure it similar. So has exit time, turn that off and then set the transition duration to 0.1 second. And for condition at this time, we're looking for less than 0.01. So whenever move is going to be less than that, where you want to transition to idle state. Also, if you would like to control the speed of the animation, you can use the move value and control it that way. So let's select parameter, use the move as the multiplier and for speed, you can adjust it to the speed of your animation. But for this animation, I think I'll have to set it to 0.5 as a multiplier. And that is it with the animator controller setup. Now we can go to our character and select that as the controller. The last thing that we have is to create a script. So let's create a script machine and I'm going to create a new script. I call it character controller. And right here we have that script in our project. Let's go to edit. And now let's add the logic for controlling this character. This is where the Spock package is going to help us out a lot. There is a unit keyboard move 3D preset, which will do all the logic that you need for a moving a character in 3D space. So for speed, I'll set it to two. You do have an option to enable it or disable it when you would like. So if you open the inventory, you can disable the controller for the character. I'll leave the enable on start here. So it's going to run as soon as the game starts. Now, if you run the game and you experience this camera jittering, what you want to do is go to the main camera. And in here we have the update method currently set to smart update. And if you switch it to a fixed update, it should smooth the camera out. Currently that unit is using the legacy input manager. So you can also use an Xbox controller to move the character around. But if you want to move the camera around, so you can do that as well, but it's not configured by default. So you need to actually uh, add that in and I can quickly show how to do that. So you can go to project settings, input manager, and then you want to expand the size of axes. So I had 18 by default and I added two more for the mouse X. And in here I selected the joystick axis, fourth axis on joystick to control that variable. You'll probably need to change the sensitivity. I increased it on mine. And then for Y axis, I used fifth axis for the joystick. And this character is pretty much done. Um, now I can see that I need to change some radiuses on the orbit for it to feel much better for this character. But once you're done, you can take this character and move him to another scene. So I'm going to copy the free loop camera and the character 
and let's go and move him to one of the game templates that we have in Spock. So I currently have a character here. So I'm gonna disable this character and the free loop camera that is currently configured here. Paste that character that we just created in. And if you didn't have a scene machine before in the in a scene where you add in a character, make sure you go to the main camera and the main camera needs to also have a main camera tag and add a cinema machine brain right here. Uh, you can look for a cinema machine brain and add it if you don't have it added already. So after that, we can click play and we can move our character around. But one thing I just noticed is that I forgot to invert the settings for the X axis and Y axis. So be sure you switch Y axis to be inverted and X axis to be switched off inverted. I think that is the default configuration most of the games have it at. Now, there we go. That's how you can add third person controller with visual scripting using Cinemachine and Spock package.